with the review. Okay, so here we go. Now this is use 3.14 for pi. Don't hit the pi button. When finding exact volume, leave your answer in terms of pi. That means that you do not multiply by 3.14. So here we have a cylinder. We get pi r squared h. That pi didn't come out very pretty. There we go. Now remember, a cone is the third of the size of a cylinder. So you have the, the volume of a cylinder and you divide it by three. Then over here, I take four pi r cubed and divide it by three. So let's do volume of a cylinder. Here we go. Okay, so this is asking, asking for approximate. Now, I always find exact first and then put it into, um, into approximate. So pi, my r is 3, so 3 squared times 6. So 9 times 6, pi. So that'll get me 54 pi. We're talking about centimeters, so centimeters cubed. And then the approximate would be 169.56. Now, it doesn't say what to round to, and since this is a terminating decimal at this point, I'm just going to leave it as that. Now, if you rounded to the nearest tenth, that's perfectly fine. You would have gotten this. So in the next one, it says it wants the exact answer. So that means first I need my radius, which is half of the diameter. So it's two centimeters. So my volume is pi r squared times the height. So that gets me four times 12 pi. That'll get me 48 pi centimeters cubed. This one is a cylindrical wedding cake with a height of six and a diameter. I don't want diameter, though I want radius of five inches. So it wants my exact and it wants my approximate answers. So I say pi r squared h. My radius is five. I square it. Six is my height. So I get 25 times 6 pi, and when I multiply that out, I get 150 pi, and that's inches cubed. And if I approximate that, I'm going to get 471 inches cubed. Okay, then volume of a cone. Remember, you take volume of a cylinder, and you divide it by three because you need three cones in order to make one cylinder. So my radius is four, I square that, multiply it by nine, divide by three. So I get 16 times nine pi over three. Now I really wish that you would cross cancel here. So three goes into nine three times. So you get 48 pi, and that's inches cubed. And it wants you to approximate. So 48 is 150, 72 inches cubed. I know I said that wrong. And if I rounded to the nearest tenth, it would just be point, oops, sorry, point 0.7. So this next one, again, and what's the exact? my favorite to do. So I take pi r squared h, which is the cylinder, and I divide it by 3. Now, 9 is the whole diameter. Well, I don't want that. I want the radius, which is 4.5. Half of 9 is 4.5. Pi times 4.5 squared times the height, which is 11. That's all over 3. So I get 
times 11 pi all over 3. When I multiply that out, I get 222.75 pi all over 3. Now, 3 does go into this number. It's not going to be a repeating decimal, so I'm going to go ahead and divide that. And when I divide that, I get 74.25 pi, and that's meters cubed. The reason other times we don't divide by 3 is because you get a repeating decimal. This does not give you a repeating decimal. So we have a funnel shape of a cone. So that means I'm going to do pi r squared. Oops, that's a horrible r. Divided by 3 because we're doing a cone. It says the diameter is 6, so I want the radius of 3. And the height is 12, so I just plug it in. Okay, so 3 squared times 12 over 3. I get 9 times 12 pi over 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. So my volume is 36 pi meters cubed. And it wants the approximate also. So when I multiply that out, I got 113.04 meters cubed. If you round to the nearest tenth, it's just 113 meters cubed. Now we have a sphere. It says the sphere's radius is 11. So this is 4 pi r cubed over 3. So I replace the r with 3. Try, try that again with 11 to the third power. When I multiply 11 to the third, I get 1,331 pi over 3. 3 doesn't go into either one of those numbers. How do I know? Because 4 is not divisible by 3 and 11 is not divisible by 3. So when I do that, I get... 5, 3, 2, 4, pi, all over 3. Now, this is our, that would be our exact answer, but it wants the approximate. So I multiply here by 3.14, I divide by 3, and when I do that, I should get 5,572.5 inches cubed. Okay, so the next one. Exact and approximate, so 4 pi r cubed all over 3. But the radius here, this gives me the diameter, so I want half of that for my radius. So when I do that, I get 4 pi, and then my r is 5 to the third power over 3. This is going to get me 4 times 125 pi over 3. 3 doesn't go into 4, 3 doesn't go into 125, so when I multiply this out, I'm going to get 500 pi over 3 centimeters cubed, and that would be my exact answer. And if I take 500 and multiply it by 3.14, I divide by 3, I'm going to get 523.3 centimeters cubed. Okay. Next one. Now, I did tell you not to do number 10, but I am going to show you how to do number 10 because it's not that hard. We just didn't do it. Okay, cylindrical. So we know that it's V equals pi R squared H. Water tank has a water level of 400 feet. So that is the height. Right there is the height. The tank holds 6,100 cubic feet of water. That means that's my volume. So I'm going to hit plug in 6100 right there. Then it says find the radius. So we don't know the radius, but we do know the height is 40. So I get 6100, and I'm going to take 40, and I'm going to take 40, and I'm going to multiply that by 3.14, and I get 125.6 r squared 
Now, this is just, we have a variable. We need to solve for that variable. So this is multiplication right here. So I just divide both sides by the 125.6. When I do that, I get 48.56 with the 6 repeating r squared. Now, do you notice how it says round to the nearest whole number? So if I was to round this to the nearest whole number, we would get 49 equals r squared. So what times itself? Squared means you take the same number and you multiply it by itself. So 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5, 25. 30, or sorry, 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7. Oh, look at that. That's 49. So 7 feet is what the radius would be. Number 11. So this one says it's a cone. So V equals pi R squared H over 3. That's just my formula. It's looking for the height. We have a volume of 209.4. So I'm going to plug that in equals pi says our radius is 5 so I'm going to do 5 squared h over 3. Now we don't like having this in the denominator so to get rid of fractions we multiply both sides by the 3. When I multiply both sides by the 3 I get 628.2 equals and 5 squared is 25 pi h. Okay, so I'm going to take 25 and I'm going to multiply it by 3.14. And when I do that, I get 78.5 h. And I need to get that h by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 78.5. when I divide both sides by 78.5. Now, the number comes out to 8.00, oh, actually I didn't do it, so 628, I mean I did, but I didn't write the answer down. 254771, blah, blah, blah. Okay, oh, sorry, you can't even see it. Sorry about that, but it says round to the nearest whole number. So that would get me 8 inches is equal to h. Again, I said number 12 you didn't have to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Pi r squared h over 3. Finding the radius when the volume is 56, 52 equals pi r squared, we don't know. The height is 6 over 3. Oh, I apologize. You couldn't see me do that. So V equals pi r squared h over 3. I replace the V with 56 to 52. Sorry about that, guys. My height I replace with 6. Now, do you notice 3 goes into 6? Where when we were doing this problem over here, 3 doesn't go into 5. That's why I didn't divide that. But on this one, 3 goes into 6 goes in two times. So I'm going to do 56, 52. I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to multiply it by 5. So that's going to give me 6.28 r squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 6.28. And when I do that, I get 9 equals r squared. What times itself gets 9? 3 centimeters is the radius. Okay, over here it says for a sphere, so 4 pi r cubed over 3. Find the radius when the volume is 904.32. Can you see what I'm writing? Um, 4 pi r cubed over 3. Again, 3 doesn't go evenly into 4, so I don't want to divide that. I want to multiply both sides by 3. When I do that, I get 2,712.96 is equal to 4 pi r cubed. I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to multiply that 
by pi or 3.14 and get 12.56 r to the third. Now I'm trying to find radius. So I need to get radius by itself. So, oops, I don't know why I put a three there. I'm gonna divide by 12.56. When I do that, I get 216 is equal to radius cubed. So it wants to know what times itself three times is gonna get uh, 216. So if I took three, let's see if you guys can see this, three, to the third power, that's gonna get 27. If I took four to the third power, I'd get 64. Five to the third power, I get 125. Six to the third power, oh, 216. So that means that six, can you see what I'm writing? No. Feet is equal to what the radius is. Okay, next one. This is a composite figure. I have a cone and I have a cylinder. So I'm gonna start with the cone. So pi r squared h over three. Let's look at the radius. Well, the diameter of this whole thing is 24, so the radius is 12 feet. Oops, sorry about that. Maybe I'll go like this a little bit. There we go. So I'm gonna replace the r with 12. So I get 12 squared and the height of the cone, I should have written cone right here, the height of the cone. So from here to here is 16. So times 16 all over three. Now three does go into 12, but I'm going to multiply that out first. So 144 times 16 all over three. So if I took 144 and I divided by three, that would get me 48. Oops, I forgot the pi. So I take 48 and I multiply it by 16. I get 768 pi. And that is going to be feet cubed. Okay, and I, I don't want to get approximate answers until the last second. So over here I have pi r squared h, because now I'm finding the cylinder. So when I do that, I get pi. We said that the radius is 12 feet. The height of the cylinder, though, is right here. That's 9. So that's 144 times 9 pi. So if I take 144 and I multiply it, I get 1,296 pi feet cubed. Now, the exact volume down here means that I'm going to take the 768 pi, and I'm going to add it to the 1,296 pi. I'm going to add those two numbers together, and hopefully I get 2,064 pi feet cubed. Now I take that number, and I multiply it by 3.14, I get 6,480.96 feet cubed. If I was to round this to the nearest tenth, I look at this number, look next door, that tells me I have to go up. This goes up to 10, so I get 6,481 feet cubed. Okay, number 15. So if you know the volume, okay, before we even do this problem, let's come back over here and look at this. If I know the cylinder is this, it takes three cones, three cones to make one cylinder. So the only thing we did to go from the cylinder to the cone is divide it by three. To go from the cone to the cylinder, we multiply by three. So right here it says, if you know that the volume of a cylinder is this, what is the volume of the cone? So we need three cones to make one cylinder. So this is a third of it. So I would divide it by three. I'd get 781.89 inches cubed. If you rounded to the nearest tenth, 781.9 inches cubed. This one is going the other way. So I know 
that this is the cone. Well, I need three cones in order to make one cylinder. So I would multiply this by three, I'd get 381.96 feet cubed. If I was to round to the nearest tenth, I look next door, that would make that go up. So it would be 380, oops, cut my numbers all backwards there. Two feet cubed. Awesome. So number 17, a baseball pitcher wants to find out the volume of a baseball. Baseballs are spheres, but the diameter is four inches. So I want the radius, which would be two inches. So volume equals pi, oops, sorry, four pi r cubed over three. So two to the third power. Notice how three doesn't go into any of those numbers. So that means that I'm going to have a fraction. So I do this, I get four times eight pi over three. So that means that I have 32 pi over three, and that is approximately 33.5 inches cubed. Now, the pitcher then cuts the baseball into four parts. So we need this in a fourth. We need a fourth of amount. So I take this and we cut it into fourths. So I divide this by four. When I do that, my volume is approximately 8.375-ish, so 8.4 inches cubed. Okay, next one. Now, if you look at the picture on the next one, I have a sphere inside of a cylinder. So I need to figure out what the, the volume is for both the cylinder and the sphere. It says right here, the radius of both of them is equal to six, and we're gonna call it six units. I don't know why they didn't put a unit on there, but that's okay. The height is 14 units. So, pi r squared h. So I'm gonna replace my r with six so I have six squared, my height is 14. I get 36 times 14 pi. When I multiply that together, I get 504 pi units cubed for an exact answer, for an approximate answer, 1,582.56 units cubed. Find the approximate of the sphere. So volume equals pi, oops, I keep forgetting that four, four pi r cubed over three. So four pi, my radius we just said was six, so six cubed over three. Now look at this, three is gonna go into this because that's a six, but we're not gonna do it until the last second, not last second, but after I multiply this out. 4 times 216 pi over 3, okay? 216 is divisible by 3, okay? So 3, that's, get me 72. So I take 4 and I multiply it by 72 and I would get 288 pi. And this is, oh yeah, units cubed. If I want my approximate answer, that would be 904.32 units cubed. Now, I am unlike other people in the fact that when I do the approximate, I always use the exact first and then find the approximate. So I have a cylinder and then the sphere takes up part of that. So the ball inside of a, a can. We're wanting to know what the empty air is. So I'm gonna take the volume of the cylinder and I'm gonna subtract the volume of the sphere. And I always use the exact first. So 504 pi minus 288 pi. 
So if I take 504 pi and I subtract 288, you should get 216 pi units cubed. But I want to know what the approximate is. So the approximate is 678.24 units cubed. Okay. Lucy is making a sandcastle at the beach. She feel, fills a big cylindrical cup with water to wet the sand. The cup is 24 inches tall, so we have a height of 24 inches and a diameter of 16, so an R is equal to 8 inches. Okay? Lucy doesn't realize the cup has a hole in it and water is leaking out at a rate of 65 inches cubed per second. How many seconds will it take before the cup is empty? Well, first thing, I have to find the volume. And it's a cylinder, so pi r squared h. How did I know that? Because anytime you fill a cylindrical cup, anytime you fill something and it's three-dimensional, you'll be take you'll be finding the volume. So here I go. So my r is 8. My height is 24. So when I multiply this, I get 64 times 24 pi. I get, sorry, my fingers are in the way, 1,536 pi inches cubed. Okay? My approximate for that is 4,823.04 inches cubed. Now, it's wanting to know per second. Okay? So I'm going to take the 4823.04. I'm going to divide it by 65. When I do that, I get approximately 74.2 seconds. Okay. The next one, a snowball, that means a sphere. So that's going to be 4 pi r cubed over 3 has a diameter of 6 centimeters. So the radius is going to be 3 centimeters. Okay, so I need to do that first. 4 pi uh, 3 to the third. Ah, 3 is going to go in here. So I get 4 times 27 pi over 3. 3 goes into 27 nine times, so I get um, 36 pi, and that's centimeters cubed. And if I'm going to find my approximate on that, I'm going to take 36, and I'm going to multiply it by 3.14, and I get 113.04, and that's centimeters cubed. The rest of the sentence says, the small snowball is sitting in the sun and is melting slowly. How many minutes would it take for the snowball to melt if it's melting at a rate of 1.8 centimeters cubed per minute? So I'm going to take centimeters cubed, divide it by centimeters cubed per minute. When I do that, I will get, oops, I started to write the wrong number. 62.8 minutes. Then it says find exact and approximate volume for the shape with the radius of 5 and the height of 8. So this one is pi r squared h. So I replace the r with 5, replace the height with 8. I get 25 times 8 pi. When I do that, I get 200 pi meters cubed. And I take 200 and I multiply it by 3.14, and I would get approximately 628 meters cubed. Now the cone, boys and girls, isn't the cone just... The cylinder divided by three, 
We already found the cylinder. It was 200 pi. I divide it by three. That's all I have to do. Then the approximate for that, we divide this by three and I get 209.3 repeating meters cubed. The sphere is gonna be four pi r cubed over three. So I replace r with five cubed three. So I would get four times 125 pi over three. When I do that, I get volume equals 500 pi over three meters cubed. Oops, I forgot meters cubed over here. And then my approximate for this, four divided by three would get me 523.3 repeating meters cubed. Okay. Next page, find the height of the cone. Okay, so we know it's a cone. So we know that it's pi r squared h over three. Make it bigger, sorry about that. The radius is three, so I'm gonna replace the radius as three. Oops. Sorry, the volume is given right here, so 113.04, sorry about that over three. Okay, so I get 113.04 equals nine pi h over three. Three goes into nine three times, so I get 113.04 equals what's three times 3.14. I would get 9.42 h. So I need to divide both sides by 9.42. Sorry, there's no space I should have written up above. And when I do that, I will get 12 centimeters is equal to the height. I know my hand gets in the way with this pen. Sorry about that. This one, it wants to find the radius of the cylinder, pi r squared h. It gives us the volume as 282.6. It gives us the height as 10. So 282.6 equals 10 times 3.14, we'll get 31.4 r squared. If I divide both sides by 31.4, 31.4, when I do that, I get nine equals r squared. What times itself gets nine? Three. So three inches is equal to the radius. This next one. Now, boys and girls, we have a hemisphere, not a sphere, but a hemisphere. So if I was to do this, a hemisphere is half of four pi r cubed over three. When I multiply these two together, two goes into four two times. So if I'm gonna have the volume of a hemisphere, it's gonna be two pi r cubed over three. Tells us the radius is three. So two pi three to the third power over three. I'm not leaving myself a lot of room. 2 times 27 pi over 3. 3 goes into 27 nine times, so my volume is 18 pi uh, inches cubed. So my approximate for that, 18 times 3.14 will get me 56.52. And I when I'm finding total volume, I don't actually use the, but I know some of you guys did. So if I'm doing my cylinder on the other hand, I get pi r squared h. Again, 
The radius is 3, so 3 squared. The height right here is 2. So I get 9 times 2 pi. When I do that, that comes to 18 pi, which, oh, look at that. That's the same answer there. So the total volume would be 18 pi plus 18 pi, which would get us 36 pi inches cubed. And if I was to find the approximate for this, I would get 113.04. Man, we've used that number a lot. I'm just saying. Inches cubed. Okay. So on the next picture we have, we have a cone inside of a cylinder. So I need to find the volume of a cone and the volume of a cylinder. So pi r squared h. If I look at this, it has a diameter of 20. So that means my radius is 10 centimeters. My height is 33. So 10 centimeters times the height of 33. So this gets me 100 times 33 pi. This gets me 3,300 pi uh, centimeters cubed. And then, guys, we have a cylinder and a cone where they have the same diameter, or sorry, the same radius and the same height. That means all I have to do is take this 3,300 pi and divide it by 3 to get the cone. Okay, so that would get me 1,100 pi centimeters cubed. Now, it's wanting the leftover space. So this time, I'm going to take the volume of the cylinder and subtract the volume of the cone. So that would get me 3300 pi minus 1100 pi. So that would get me 2200 pi. So I take 2200 pi and that's centimeters cubed. And that would be approximately 6908 centimeters cubed. Sorry about that. So, number 26, we have a cylinder container of ice cream that has a radius of 3 and a height of 6. Okay, so we've got pi r squared h. So, radius is 3, height is 6. So, this is 9 times 6 pi, so this is going to get us 54 pi uh, inches cubed. Okay. <gasps> So sorry, you couldn't see any of that. I have pi r squared h. My radius was 3. My height was 6. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 6 is 54 inches cubed. Sorry about that. Then it says your ice cream scoop produces a sphere. So that means now I'm going to have 4 pi r cubed over 3, which has a diameter of 1.5. So that means my radius is 0 0.75. Okay, so now I have to do that. So 4 pi 0 0.75 cubed over 3. Do you know that 3 goes into 0 0.75? 0 0.25? Okay, so 4 pi... And that's going to get me 0 0.42175875 all over 3. If I multiply those two numbers together, I would get 1.6875 pi over 3. And my approximate is going to come out to 1.76625. Uh, inches cubed. Oops, sorry about that. I'm having a hard time. Now, it wants to know how many scoops of ice cream can you make out of one container? So if my whole container... Uh, you know what? I'm going to do 54 times... 
this is approximately 169.56, and that's inches cubed. My whole container is this amount. Each scoop is this amount. How many scoops do I get? So I take 169.56. I divide that by 1.76625. And when I get that, hopefully you get 96 scoops. Okay. Mrs. Koo is making a batch of cookies for the students in her culinary two class. She mixes up a giant ball of dough that has a radius ball. So doesn't that mean that we're gonna do four pi r cubed over three? My r value is six, so six to the third power over three. So that's gonna get me four times 216 pi over three. Um, 216 divided by 3 will get me 72. And so that would get me 288 pi um, inches cubed. Then it says to ensure that the the each cookie will be the same size, she needs to divide up the dough evenly. Oops, sorry about that. She has 25 students in her class. If she makes one cookie for each student, how much dough will be used in each cookie? What is the volume of one cookie? So I'm going to take 288 pi, and I'm going to divide that by 25. Well, first, um, I want to multiply this out, and I get 904.32. Divide that by 25. When I do that, I get 36.1728 inches cubed. And last, but certainly not least, I look at this picture. What's the radius? 12 inches. What's the height? 30 inches. The diameter is twice the radius, so 24 inches.